In my research, I'd say that the principal causes of extreme poverty are racism and the remnants of racist or apartheid systems. That can be manifest in environmental racism, economic racism, and a general impoverishment and disenfranchisement from the uh, dominant understanding of how society works. I think linked to that is a lack of education, and education in its broadest sense, so including an understanding of um, individuals' rights and responsibilities. Um, and linked to that, I think there's um, a, an issue there of instinctive um, recourse to an individualistic mindset when it comes to poverty and responses to poverty that actually um, does more to instill uh, systems of poverty than it does to address them. Well, the way I, I look at it is that um, there are both top-down and bottom-up responses to the um, causes of extreme poverty I've just outlined. For me, the top-down responses would be responses at the institutional level, the level of legislation, of law and regulation, that address head-on the remaining aspects of inequality and systemic racism uh, within the particular countries that my research links to. Um, and in terms of bottom-up uh, responses or grassroots responses, that for me would be along the lines of civil education um, that I spoke about a moment ago, um, helping people to understand what their rights and responsibilities are within a joined-up or a community uh, context, um, helping to unpick this individualistic or atomized narrative um, of what it means to be um, essentially a consumer and replacing that or helping um, to replace that with a narrative around what it means to be a citizen. I think the principal use or the principal utility of the Millennium Development Goals and as we're seeing now the Sustainable Development Goals emerging is their normative or declarative value, saying at the highest level, loudly, clearly, um, that poverty is unacceptable and that we as states and citizens uh, will and must respond to poverty. Um, so I think at that highest level, um, at the normative level, they're incredibly useful and they're useful to galvanise public opinion, to galvanise um, a direction and an impetus um, for change. I guess where they um, where they provide us with a challenge is actually translating that, um, that set of declarations and intention and aspiration, um, concretizing that into um, things that are, are going to affect meaningful change on the ground. And that for me is where um, I think actually a human rights framework um, that is um, embedded um, into uh, national constitutional law helps us um, na uh, navigate um, concrete ob obligations in terms of uh, state human rights obligations. Mm -hmm. And for me, there, therefore, there needs to be an um, increasing synergy between the uh, Sustainable Development Goals and the discourse of human rights. I think when we get those two operating together and when we see positive poverty objectives uh, through the lens of human rights claims, um, then I think we can get a bit closer to realising uh, some or all of those claims.